What you are about to see is much more than a height competition. It is largely the material representation of recent history, of what we were and what we are, and of the dreams and aspirations of some of the people who have shaped our present. This video is divided into two sections. First, we will get to know each of the buildings a bit, and to conclude, we will address the different height classifications according to the criteria established by the CTBUH and how the institution's priority selection has affected its protagonists. Let's get started. With 124 years behind it, in a height of 390 feet, the Park Row building is the dean of this elite club of the world's tallest skyscrapers. It was designed by architects R. H. Robertson and George B. Post in a French Renaissance style, and completed in 1899. In the beginning, was envisioned as an entirely speculative development, and from the start, was intended to be the world's tallest office building. Today, it still stands impressively at 15 Park Row in the financial district of the Manhattan Borough of New York City. Although it doesn't compete in the skyscraper category, it deserves recognition as a record-setting building. Here we have the pride of the city of Philadelphia, its City Hall. Completed in 1901, it was designed by architects John MacArthur Jr. and Thomas Eustick Walter in the Italian Renaissance Revival style. It stands at a height of 548 feet including the statue of William Penn. It's worth noting that it has 700 rooms and 14 acres of interior space, and it's also a very popular tourist destination in Pennsylvania. Unfortunately, for those of us who appreciate this type of architecture, the Singer Building can only be seen in simulations like this or in pictures, as it was demolished in 1968. It was designed by Ernest Flagg for the Singer Company, the major sewing machine manufacturer, and completed in 1908, it was located at 125 Broadway, in the heart of Manhattan, and had a height of 613 feet or 670 feet if we include the spire. For its construction, reinforced concrete was used, an innovative material for the time. Now it's the turn of the Metropolitan Life Tower. This building was designed by the architectural firm of Napoleon Lebrun & Sons, and occupies a full block in the Flatiron District of Manhattan, in New York City. Inspired by St. Mark's Campanile, the tower with a height of 700 feet, features four clock faces, four bells, and lighted beacons at its top. To understand its dimensions better, we can point out that only the minute hands weigh 1,000 pounds and measure 17 feet. It has housed the luxurious New York Edition Hotel since 2015. And though I risk it being inappropriate to mention, this is my favorite skyscraper among the classics, and I have plans to dedicate a monograph to it. But for today, let it suffice to say that it was designed by the architect Cass Gilbert, commissioned by the magnate Franklin Winfield Woolworth, and completed in 1913. Its impressive 791 feet in height allowed it to hold the height title for over 16 years. And even today, this prominent New Yorker remains an imposing building. The Manhattan Company building in New York City, better known as 40 Wall Street or the Trump Tower, is probably, despite being a magnificent building, the least relevant on the list. And perhaps this is because its leadership was fleeting, lasting only a few weeks, commissioned by the Manhattan Company, and designed in the neo-Gothic style by H. Craig Severance with Yasuo Matsui and Shreve and Lam, it was completed in 1930 and reaches a height of 927 feet. With the current protagonist, I would dare to say that we enter the category of heavyweights. Here we have the well-known Chrysler Building, a true pioneer of its time. This timeless jewel of Art Deco was designed by William Van Allen, commissioned by none other than Walter Chrysler and completed in 1930. And although much has been written about this relationship and what it meant for the architect, today we'll focus on the fact that the skyscraper was the first to surpass the 1,000-foot mark, specifically reaching 1,046 feet, and that it continues to be an architectural icon. And now, without any hesitation, don't say skyscrapers, say Empire State Building, here is the most influential building in modern history. A true titan of architecture, a colossal work and a global landmark, with its 1,250 feet at the time of construction, it shattered the previous record and remained at the top for 40 years. In 1953, an antenna was added, bringing its total height to 1,454 feet. It was designed by Shreve, Lamb and Harmon, 
commissioned by Empire State Inc. and completed in 1931. And we've reached the point where data inevitably intersects with emotions, but we won't make it difficult and we'll focus on the former. So let's point out that these unforgettable giants were designed by Minoru Yamasaki, commissioned by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, in a lower Manhattan revitalization project, led by David Rockefeller. The Twin Towers were completed in 1971 with a maximum rooftop height of 1,368 feet on Tower 1 and 1,728 feet to the tip of the antenna. And if Chicagoans allow me the joke, we've arrived at the Darth Vader of skyscrapers, the colossal building that ended the reign of New York City and transferred it to the seat of Cook County, a building that, as we'll see shortly, deserved to reign for even longer. But let's move on to the facts, Designed by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, commissioned by Sears, Roebuck and Company, it was inaugurated in 1973. It has a rooftop height of 1,451 feet and 1,729 feet to the tip of the pinnacle. And here, perhaps prematurely and in a not entirely explainable manner, the uninterrupted reign of America came to an end after more than 100 years, the responsible parties for this milestone are the impressive Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, a formidable steel and glass structure that soars to 1,483 feet. Their design was the work of architect Cesar Pelli, commissioned by Petronas Lubricants International. They were inaugurated in 1998. And we've arrived at the penultimate skyscraper on the list, and the most unique in my opinion. It's the Taipei 101, located in Taiwan. Designed by C.Y. Lee and C.P. Wong, commissioned by Taipei Financial Center Corporation, it has a rooftop height of 1,474 feet and a total height of 1,667 feet at the pinnacle. The building, situated in an area affected by both earthquakes and typhoons, features a tuned mass damper consisting of a large steel ball weighing 680 metric tons on the 92nd floor. Finally, the number one in the ranking, the immense Burj Khalifa in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, a colossus measuring 2,722 feet to the tip, and with a height of 1,921 feet to its highest floor. Designed by a team led by Adrian Smith of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, commissioned by the Emir of Dubai, Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the construction of this mega-tall building was part of an ambitious civic project aimed at diversifying the Emirates' economy and attracting tourism and investments. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're now going to take a moment to explore the criteria established by the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat to determine the global ranking of buildings by their height. This is the primary, and in this case, it's as if there were no other because it's the one widely disseminated in terms of information. It is based on the architectural top of the building, including spires, but excluding antennae, signage, flagpoles, or other functional technical equipment. Here we have the second criterion recognized by the CTBUH. In this case, it is based on the height to highest occupied floor or, in other words, the finished floor level of the highest occupiable floor within the building. What's noteworthy about this classification is that if it were the primary one, the Petronas Towers would have never made it into this ranking. But we still have one more. This third criterion is based on the total height of any part of the building without delving into matters that are more semantic than technical. Because, if we look closely, there are antennas that look like spires and spires that look like antennas. And whether a part of the building is removable or not seems like an inconsistent argument. The point is, if this criterion were the primary one, not only would the Petronas Towers have been excluded, but even the Taipei 101 wouldn't have made it into this ranking. That would have meant the Sears Tower would have retained the title until the Burj Khalifa appeared. And now the question is, what motivates one to be the primary criterion over the other? What do you think? And with this question, it's time to conclude the video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. I leave you with a panoramic view of the buildings and bid you farewell until next time. See you soon.